In a few moments, he will have written the funniest joke in the world. And as a consequence, he will die laughing. <laughs> First off, I think it's wrong to say either style of comedy is better. I find it kind of annoying when people say British comedy is always smarter or wittier. Have you seen Arrested Development or 21 Jump Street or even a Spongebob episode? Be careful, Patrick. Being an artist is a heavy responsibility. Each work of art is like a child and must be treated as such. Come on! I was just gonna draw a cartoon! Okay, why didn't you say so? There's definitely very smart writing on both sides of the Atlantic. But that doesn't answer the question. What makes them different? After weeks of research, my answer is still I don't know, but let's give it a shot. No one could read it and live. I don't, I don't change it. I mean, the difference, you know, if we're talking about um, the big two, Britain and America. Um, sorry, rest of the world. I think the first step is to take a British comedy and see how its American adaptation changed. What's the difference between David Brent and Michael Scott? By season two, the US office begins its movement away from the UK original. We even see a subtle cinematic change by brightening the lights in the office. While originally just a way to differentiate it from the UK version, the added brightness seems to serve as a nice metaphor for the adaptation as a whole. But the big difference is that Americans are more optimistic. and. Uh, and that's due to the fact that Americans are told they can become the next president of the United States. And they can. British people are told it won't happen to you. And they carry that. They carry that with them. There's no doubt that America lightened up the show. Michael Scott had his failures, but there's a hope to it. In one episode, he wasn't invited to Jim's party, but shows up anyway, genuinely hurt and bitter. Wow! Who opened the morgue for this thing? He picks a duet song and no one will sing it with him. Reluctantly, Jim joins in, giving Michael a big cheesy smile and an overall happy ending to the episode. But when David Brent performs, it's still funny, but a different kind of funny. Nobody pities him or cheers him on. They all just watch in embarrassment. <laughs> There's no happy ending and it's not very hopeful. Or look at how both characters wrap up their time on the show, spoiler alert. Michael Scott quits to move with his fiance to Colorado and David Brent begs for his job back. I will try twice hard, I really will. I know I've been complacent and I will, I'll turn this place around if we just say that, that it's not definite now. And of course, this doesn't include the Christmas special, which was a lot happier. Put it this way, the American comic hero, like John Belushi or someone like that, is the, you know that scene in uh, Animal House, where the, uh, the, the, the play, uh, there's a fellow playing folk music on a guitar, and John Belushi picks up the guitar and destroys it. And the cinema lock, because he just smashes it and then waggles his eyebrows at the camera. And everyone says, God, he's so great. Well, a British comedian would want to play the folk singer. <laughs> you, we want to play the failure. Get her engine started. Uh... So maybe the difference is the optimistic American dream versus the dark British reality? At least that's what many people think about it. Europe is just basically a gene pool mm. of, of people whose ancestors said, oh, oh, I don't, I don't think I can risk, no, I can't risk it. America is a gene pool of people say, let's risk it, yeah, let's, let's, let's try it. But I think that answer is too easy, because you have to ignore the fact that Americans love the failures, like Sean from Shaun of the Dead, and plenty of modern American sitcoms feature losers who never get their redemption. Frankly, I think it's an outdated theory. The past television era of Mary with Children and Seinfeld and Friends always featured the classic wise guy who always had the funny one-liner for every moment. So you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. 
but I think in the last 10 years, we're starting to see a self-awareness of this American dream optimism style of comedy. In It's Always Sunny, there certainly is that feeling of hope in the characters. They think they can accomplish anything, but they always take it way too far by becoming violent, cruel, and hilariously backstabbing. It's almost a critique on American optimism. In America, you're supposed to succeed, but at what cost? Look, if we use a gun, we're definitely gonna need a silencer. A gun? Oh, fine, no guns, no guns. Uh, piano wire, okay? Maybe we can use the piano wire. Look, whatever it is, <laughs> I gotta be the guy to pull the trigger on this thing. Not to mention they always fail and face the consequences. And it seems like not one single thing ever works out for Larry in Curb Your Enthusiasm. I need them! Step out of the car, please. Oh, come on, are you serious? And an episode of Louie ends with his date running into a helicopter to escape him. It doesn't get more pathetic than that. So maybe some American comedy pokes fun at the hope and lighthearted nature of past sitcoms. Or maybe American comedy is even shifting towards that British cynicism. Or maybe we'll always hold that American optimism in our hearts. And even in the millennial generation, where the American dream seems to do nothing but screw us over, it'll always be ingrained in our culture and mindset to shrug it off and keep on trying. I'm not gonna take no for an answer because I, I, I just refuse to do that because I'm a winner. And winners, we don't listen to words like, like no or, or don't or stop. Those words are just not in our vocabulary. I know this is a topic a lot of people get passionate about, but I hope the comment section doesn't get too heated. At least, I don't expect some kind of Spanish Inquisition. Inquisition. Thanks for watching. Here it is, a clue slightly transformed. Just a bit of a break from the norm. Just a little something to break the monotony of all that hard.